One Zambia, One Nation, thanks for joining us on Zanis News. To present, my name is Juliet Mutale. Top stories in the news tonight. President Hijilama in Mozambique for state visit. Government cracks a racket of traders overpricing milli meal in Kabwe. Commissioning of 51 million water reticulation system in Muchinda province set. Plus delays to complete in Sumbu Mini Hospital worry government. Zanis News in detail. President Hagainde Hijilima has arrived in Maputo, Mozambique to begin his three day state visit. The plane carrying the head of state, accompanied by First Lady Mutinta Hijilima, touched down at the Maputo International Airport Air Force Base at exactly 11.30 hours local time. The president was received by Mozambique's Foreign Affairs Minister Veronica Makamo. The Zambian delegation on hand to receive the president included Minister of Foreign Affairs Stanley Kakubo, Energy Minister Peter Kapala, Transport and Logistics Minister Frank Tayali, and Zambia's High Commissioner to Mozambique Lloyd Himambo, among other embassy staff. While in Mozambique, President Hijilema will, among other engagements, attend the Zambia Mozambique Business Forum, which will be held in the port of Beira. Details in this report. Zambian President Hagain Dechlema is in Mozambique for a three day state visit. This is President Hagain Dechlema's first official visit to this country since assuming office in 2021. The head of state, accompanied by First Lady Mutinta Hichlema, touched down at the Maputo International Airport Air Force Base at exactly 11.30 hours. President Hichlema was welcomed at the airport by Mozambican Foreign Affairs Minister Veronica Makamo. The Zambian delegation, which received President Haka in the HLM, included Foreign Affairs Minister Stanley Kakubo, Energy Minister Peter Kapala, Transport and Logistics Minister Frank Tayali, and Zambia's Acting High Commissioner to Mozambique, Roy Himambo. <laughs> The president's visit to Mozambique is aimed at furthering the cordial bilateral relations that the two countries have enjoyed since time immemorial. Kalan Muchima reporting for Zanis in Maputo, Mozambique. Zambia and Mozambique have signed a memorandum of understanding in the area of media cooperation. The memorandum of understanding seeks to foster cooperation in the field of policy and development between the two countries. The MOU has been signed between the Ministry of Information and Media of Zambia and the Ministry of Cabinet Informa Information of Mozambique. Zambia's Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Stanley Kakubo, signed on behalf of Zambia, while Mozambique's Foreign Affairs Minister, Veronica Makamo, signed on behalf of her country. President Hagainde Hijilima and his Mozambican counterpart, Felipe Nyusi, Witness the signing ceremony. Kalan Muchima is in Mozambique and gives us the details. Of memorandum of understanding between the Republic of Mozambique by the uh, Information Office, Gabifu, and Government of Zambia, represented by the Ministry of Information. The memorandum aims at uh, making our lives easier. It has to do with communication and it goes along with the component of democracy. There's a lot that ought to be communicated and this memorandum is a basis for us to communicate between the two countries and to 
ensure the circulation of communication between our countries. But the object uh, is also will be available to the public for you to understand what it's all about. Important thing is to maintain peace and stability in our countries. And the systems we choose must allow us to foster peace, security, and stability. Any system that injects instability is a system that will cause trouble, even for the kids who are not yet born, those who are still conceived. And that is important. And Mr. President and I have talked about the importance of working together to keep our countries peaceful. And uh, that's why we are supporting each other in the northern Mozambique uh, situation. And, um, and as I said earlier, that allows us space, time, resources that we have to be used for uh, development and to support the lives of our people. Vice President Mtalina Mango has called on the church leaders in the country to ensure that members traveling for various church programs are well taken care of and security measures put in place at all times. The Vice President was speaking when she received donations for the Chiluri Island victims and other victims to experiencing floods from various institutions at the Disaster Management and Mitigation Unit offices. Details in this report. The tragic death of 14 Seventh-day Adventist SDA choir members on Lake Bangweulu has left the nation mourning. Acting President Mtalena Lumango has since received donations from various organizations, among them Damon TV Media, National Savings and Credit Bank Natsev, and the Chinese Youth Entrepreneurs Association in Zambia to assist the families. To not save for the donation of the check amounting to 150,000, we have all heard why they feel the way they feel. It is part of their feeling responsibility from the community in which they serve and in which they do business. And the Chinese Youth Entrepreneurs Association in Zambia says Zambia is their second home and they felt duty bound to render a helping hand to the government. As an affiliate of the Zambia Chinese Association, the Chinese Youth Entrepreneurs Association in Zambia is urging our members and our fellow countrymen to step up their generous support for the people in need at this time of difficulty. NatSev Chief Executive Officer Malcolm Chabala stated that NatSev is the only bank in Chiluvi Island and that the bank mourns with the people of Chiluvi. decided to help ease the burden of those who are bereaved by donating 150,000 kwacha to go towards uh, funeral expenses. Meanwhile, Damon TV Media, in partnership with Betka and Central Loans, also donated items ranging from clothes, sanitizers, and detergents worth 50,000 kwacha. The initiative, in partnership with uh, sponsors who collaborate with us uh, on our platform, um, and it will only be prudent for me this morning, uh, Your Honor, to mention the likes of uh, Betika and Century Loans, who, alongside Diamond TV, managed to put together an assorted um, consortium of items ranging from bales of clothes to sanitizers, uh, detergents worth around 50,000 kwacha. Audrey Kalenga, Zanis News, Lusaka. Thank you, Audrey, for that report. Mineral seven people have drowned where one person has survived after a boat they were in capsized on Luangwa River. Rangwa District Commissioner Luke Chikani, Luke Chikani has confirmed the incident to Zanis in Luangwa today, saying the water accident occurred yesterday around 13 hours on the Mozambique side of Luangwa River. Mr. Chikani said three out of seven bodies were retrieved from the water yesterday, while two more were retrieved this morning, bringing the total number of retrieved bodies to five and the search for the remaining two more bodies has continued. He said among the dead are six Zambians and one is a Mozambique national. Mr. Chikani said the names of the victims are withheld until their relatives are informed. 
The district commissioner expressed sadness by the water accident that has claimed seven lives. He said that the five bodies which have been retrieved as two in Mozambique and arrangements are being made to transport dead Zambian nationals to Luangwa in Zambia. We move to Central Province. Central Province Permanent Secretary Milna Munakampwe this morning stormed Kamushanga Market in Kawe, where people are reselling government subsidized milli meal, causing a hike in the price of the commodity. Mr. Munakampwe found a shop stocked with 100 bags of milli meal, which is selling at 125 kwacha by the Zambia Correctional Service, being sold between 195 kwacha and 200 kwacha per 25 kilogram bag. Mr. Monakampwe has warned that government will not allow people to sell milli meal produced by the Zambia Correctional Service and Zambia National Services to be sold above 120 kwacha. More in this report. He is demanding answers. Central Province How Permanent Secretary prepared. wants to know why milli meal supplied by the Zambia Correctional Services, is being sold at 200 kwacha and not the recommended 120 kwacha. But there's collusion. There's collusion. Collusion is the same. We have to attend the drama. We have to attend the drama. We have to drama. We have to attend the drama. We have to attend the drama. After the track of prisons, the prisons, the government has to pay They are doing the best that they can. But some workers within there are conniving with you. A shop owned by Astrida Mwape is stacked with a milli meal meant for resale. This milli meal must be given to the people at 120. When super meal, 125, it must be given to them at 125. Currently, shop owners are contracting people to buy the milli meal from the Zambia Correctional Services truck where individuals are only allowed to buy one bag. This has caused confusion at Kamshanga Market, where residents want to buy the cheaper milli meal. The permanent secretary has warned that this will not be tolerated. Karonga milling that is owned by uh, Zambia Correctional Service offloads milling mill at much, much cheaper prices. And then uh, someone who has money makes people line up. And then they take this milling mill, mop it quickly, load it in a shop, and sell for 200, 205, 195. I think that is not acceptable. Trupekile and Kunika Fozanis in Kabwe Central Province. In a related development, Copper Belt Provincial Minister Elisha Matambo says the police will not hesitate to arrest millers found exporting milli meal to the neighboring countries. Mr. Matambo has noted that the illegal exportation of milli meal to the neighboring countries is leading to a shortage of the commodity in the country, hence the need for government and the milling companies to work together to fight this scourge. The minister recently visited the named milling companies to establish the root cause of millimeter shortages and high prices in the province. Let's take a look in this report. The shortage of the country's staple of food on the Copper Belt province has prompted the provincial minister, Elisha Matambo, in the company of Ndola District Commissioner Joseph Piri, the security wings from the police, immigration, and the Zambia National Service to two or four million companies in Ndola District to assess the root cause of poor supply of millimil in the province. Jambo, Sunshine, Star, and Chimangachanga are among the milling companies that were visited. Yes, so where we want to make sure that uh, we give first priority to our people in the compounds to have the millimil available, also millimil which is affordable. Mr. Matambo is disappointed that despite millers claiming that they are supplying enough millimil on the market, they are failing to meet the demand and smuggling of the commodity to the neighboring countries has continued. So we we'll monitor the price at which it is selling. We we'll also the monitor the movement of minimum from this plant to your outlets. And from those outlets to the individuals who will be buying. 
our team, the task force which is going around checking on those who are they want to do illegal export. They get your vehicle to be forfeited to the state. The millers have pledged to cooperate with governments to find a solution to the shortage of the country's most treasured commodity. My suggestion is uh, people who are taking Congolese and the people who are buying now we cannot even differentiate. They are coming to our shops, they are coming to everywhere to buy the two packs, three packs. So we don't even know. And people nowadays, they don't even buy bulk. They buy two packs, three packs. You'll be surprised. You take one pound to the depot, the, within two hours to finish. We are saying even one pack. We try even sometimes to look for police people because the crowd is too much. We have allowed individuals, customers who come to buy one pack, two pack. We've made selling points within our premises. We do not have uh, depots, but we've got mobile uh, vans which go around. The delay of delivering maize on time by the Food Reserve Agency has also been cited as one of the reasons of low production by some millers. Nelly Botta reporting for Zanis in Dola. You are watching Zanis News from Mass Media Complex. There has been a sustained campaign towards self-deliveries of expectant mothers at health facilities. Some concerns have emerged on the unusual increase of cesarean section beds. Luasim Tafela caught up with some health experts at Chipata Central Hospital to try and understand the increase, the increase in cesarean section deliveries. The increasing rate of caesarean section surgery are of concern not only to health authorities, but also community members, some of whom have superstitious beliefs about this medical intervention. At Chipata Central Hospital in the first quarter of this year, caesarean section deliveries account for more than one in five of the child births recorded. We caught up with Dr. Kumwenda, head of Department for Obstetrics and Gynecology at Chipata Central Hospital. In January, we had uh, conducted a total number of 681 deliveries, out of which 277 were caesarean sections. And then we, in February, we conducted a total number of um, 500, 559 deliveries, again, out of which 226 were via caesarean section. So our caesarean rate is uh, lingering around uh, 39 to 40%. Other factors that have contributed to this situation is the use of herbal remedies during pregnancy and labor, as well as the increasing number of teenage girls getting pregnant prematurely. It is even one of the reasons why we end up even operating. You know, when uh, the uterus is not contracting, normally it's just busy pumping, busy pumping, the baby gets to be stressed. So the baby is stressed. What is the ultimate? The passage hasn't yet opened to allow the baby to come out, but yet the uterus has been given this uh, herbal, what we call uh, oxytocin, some drug which is able to contract the uterus, make the uterus contract abnormally. So we tend to see um, a good number of under 18 um, pregnant mothers, and these many of them, we tend to house them under our mother's shelter because they are high risk. What are some of the most common medical reasons recorded here for caesarean section? One of them is uh, the woman who comes with bleeding. The woman comes bleeding with a term pregnancy, others even when the pregnancy is, is not term. So for such, we will not keep that woman to say, no, I'll just deliver normally. We will always look at ways in which to save her. And the only option there is to take her for operation so that we save both the mother and the baby. However, some community members have their own views. <laughs> For Zanis in Chipata District, I'm Lubasim Tafela. Now, government with support from the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations has launched a conservation agriculture baseline and scaling up framework in Zambia 
The baseline is aimed at tracking the country's progress towards meeting the 2014 Malabo Declaration targeted at increasing adoption to climate-smart agriculture by smallholder farmers in African countries by 2025. Details in this report. Zambia is part of the 2014 Malabo Declaration, which set a target of ensuring that by 2025, more than 25 million farmers adopt climate-resilient production systems in Africa. With only two years to go, government with support from the Food Agriculture Organization of the United Nations and other cooperating partners undertook a baseline study to evaluate the country's progress for the program. FAO is concerned with low uptake of climate-smart agriculture among small-scale farmers in Zambia and has since pledged support to accelerate the program. I wish to affirm that FAO remains committed to supporting the government of Zambia in its quest to increase adoption of conservation agriculture among farmers, especially among the smallholder farmers. Okay? But generally, adoption is below 30%. Uh, you may be aware that FAO, in partnership with the Minister of Agriculture and CIMIT, is promoting conservation agriculture. As the country positions itself to take advantage of the increased demand for the maize and maize products by other countries, the promotion of conservation agriculture is key towards increasing crop production. So if we, we increase productivity in this country, that means even the learning market that we have in the DRC, in Burundi, in Rwanda, in Zimbabwe, in Malawi, what we are calling smuggling, there's a yawning market among our members. And South Africa now is busy strategizing to see how they can capture this market. So if we are still we are not producing, we are calling our traders who are exporting maize, we are calling them smugglers, we are not producing. South Africa is strategizing right now to produce more maize and they overtake this DRC market. Climate Smart Agriculture Alliance Zambia Board Chairperson has called for the creation of strong supporting coordination and partnerships for scaling up conservation agriculture in Zambia. The tool was for us to understand the impact of the climate change on smallholder farmers. You can't address the problem if you don't know what you're happening. So understanding the impact was really, really critical. Number three was for us to determine what kind of conservation practices you know, are actually being used among the farmers and what can we scale up. As the country works towards meeting the Malabo Declaration and the set targets in the 8th National Development Plan, there's a need for intensified efforts aimed at mitigating the impact of climate change and increasing adaptation levels among smallholder farmers. Mitchell Olwinda for Zanis in Osaka. We move to Muchinga province. Chambeshi Water Supply and Sanitation Company says or is set for the commissioning of the 51 million kwacha water reticulation treatment plant. Company Managing Director Engineer Laxon Simumba says all the water infrastructure is already in use in readiness for the commissioning of the water project tomorrow, Wednesday. The development has cheered many residents who have been experiencing water blues for years now. Details, details by Miriam Kumwenda. Preparations towards the commissioning of the water project in Chinsali District in Chinga Province are underway. Speaking ahead of the commissioning of the 51 million kwacha water recreation treatment plant, said for commissioning tomorrow Wednesday, Chambeshi Water Supply and Sanitation Company Managing Director Lakson Sumumba says the utility company is ready for the commissioning. We started the preparation way back, I'd say three months ago, in terms of um, uh, this event, which will take place uh, tomorrow on the 5th of uh, uh, April uh, 2023, uh, we are just doing the final touches in terms of setting up the, the tents for the guests. Staff from the ministry, some arrived yesterday, they are here, others are arriving today, together with the minister and the permanent secretary. Uh, all is set uh, to commission the Chinsali water supply uh, project. It has been an outstanding project for quite some time. Uh, we started this project uh, somewhere in May 2013, and we have been on it um, and completed it uh, somewhere, somewhere in October last year. And now we are ready for, for this commission. Engineer Simumba says a new water system will improve water supply in the district. Housing about uh, 5 million cubic meters of water in a year. 
and our demand within uh, uh, Chinsali is just about 1.5 million uh, cubic meters per year. So we still have a lot of surplus water for any development. And as you can see, we bought this uh, model treatment plant, uh, which is about uh, 200 uh, cubic meters per hour capacity in terms of its production. All the facilities are new. So with the addition of this plant plus uh, the Mishisha spring, uh, it meant that uh, we are now above uh, the demand uh, to supply enough water in, uh, in, in Chisai. The water reticulation project, which is to be commissioned, has been constructed by China Gansu and Austria's residents. Uh, the background of uh, water supply in Chinsali hasn't been so efficient, of which most of the days it has been on and off. And as residents, uh, we are very happy and pleased to hear that there will be a new supply now, at least we'll have water 24-7. Miriam Kumwenda, reporting for Zanis in Chinsali, Nchinga province. And in Southern Province, the United Church of Zambia, UCZ, has donated food and non-food items to the Disaster Management and Mitigation Unit, DMMU, for onward distribution to flood victims in Southern Province. Speaking when he received the donation of 1,000 by 25 kilogram bags of millimeal and assorted, assorted clothes on behalf of government, Southern Province Permanent Secretary Naman Monze said the province has over 28,000 households who, are, who were affected by flash floods during the 2022-2023 rainy season. Dr. Monze said out of the 28,000 household, 2,100 were displaced and were taken into 21 camps across the province. Mike Munkomwe now reports. Humanitarian assistance to the 2022-2023 flood victims in southern province has continued to come through with the United Church of Zambia Mission and Evangelical Office donating 1,000 bags of 25 kg minimum and non-food items to DMMU for onward distribution. In light of this sad reality, the United Church of Zambia through its mission activity mobilized some little resources through the general membership particularly our mothers, our fathers, youth, and every member of the church to respond and supplement to the government effort through DMMU, which is responding swiftly to the affected. This gesture that has been shown will not only go to our members dotted in the areas where the floods are, but to go to anyone. It is not biased towards United Church of Zambia, but anyone who is affected. To us, that is very special, demonstrating that truly we are all one in Jesus. Southern Province Permanent Secretary received the donation. It's very gratifying today to note that through the church, UCZ in particular, provincial administration has a true partner. So, I think this is an epitome of true partnership. This is an epitome of true um, complementarity, yeah. where government and the church come together to save a common citizen. Yes. And uh, Bishop, uh, I think this kind of gesture cannot be taken lightly. We want to put it on record that we are truly, truly, and deeply indebted to, to you. 28,000 households were affected by floods during the 2022-2023 rain season, out of which 2,100 were displaced and camped in the 21 camp set across the province. Mike Munkombwe, Zanis, in Choma District, Southern Province. We now move to Northern Province, where the provincial administration has summoned the contractor engaged to complete the remaining works at Nsumbu Mini Hospital in Sama District to explain what has led to delays in finishing the project despite being funded. Provincial Permanent Secretary Bernard Mpundu, who inspected the mini hospital in Nsama, which is funded by Lake Tanganyika Development Project, expressed disappointment with the slow pace the contractor is moving. 
More in this report. Construction works at Nsumbumin Hospital started in 2017 and were scheduled to be completed in 2018. However, phase one of construction works stalled after the contractor abandoned the works despite being funded. And in December 2022, government engaged another contractor, Shachitari Construction Company, to finish the remaining works within five months. Northern Province Permanent Secretary Bernard Mpundu has inspected the project and expressed concern with the slow pace the contractor is moving. What we are seeing is not, is not rhyming with what we are hearing. I'm disappointed because last, just last week we had a meeting where our government engineers came to report in a meeting to me that progress in this hospital is, is fantastic. Coming on the ground, I'm seeing the opposite. And that's why my impression is very bad. And Mr. Mpundu has tasked the district administration in Insama to closely monitor the contractor. Secondly, I think I've seen last from the office of the DC. They are not supervising. They are not supervising. And that's why I was telling the DA who is present here to say, sir, I think next week come back and ensure that all the workforce that they are promising us that they will be in place uh, by, by, by weekend next week, everyone will be here. And you must make a report to the provincial administration. Summer District Works Supervisor Dominic Katongo also expressed concern at the delays by the contractor. But Shachitari Construction Company has maintained that it will beat the deadline set to finish the works. What I can assure you is that we have planned with the thing. Um, uh, our management to say uh, come in two months' time, uh, we are able to think uh, to finish uh, the, uh, this project. For Zanis News, I am Patrick Kabwe in Nsumbu, Nsama District. The Ministry of Community Development and Social Services has launched the Phase 5 of the Girls' Education and Women's Empowerment and Livelihoods Jewel Payment Program. Minister of Community Development and Social Services Doreen Mwamba launched the program which is aimed at increasing access to livelihood support for poor women and secondary education for vulnerable girls. Let's take a look in this report. Ministry of Community Development and Social Services Minister Doreen Mwamba was in Chongwe District to officially launch the Phase 5 of the Productivity Grant of the Supporting Women's Livelihoods, a component of the Girls' Education and Women's Empowerment and Livelihoods GWL. The program, which is being implemented through the Ministry of Community Development and Social Services, targets to uplift the lives of 129,400 women and girls in 81 districts. Ms. Mwamba stated that the program is among the many social protection programs that government is currently implementing in various districts to uplift the lives of women and girls in the country. The Supporting Women's Livelihoods, SWL, is a component of the girls' education and women's empowerment and livelihoods under the dual project. So far, the SWL project, as in the previous phase, that is phase one to phase four, dispersed productivity grants of 3,790 to 91,549 beneficiaries against the targeted number of 129,400. So there is need to scale up. Chongwa Member of Parliament Sylvia Masebo says she is pleased with the impact that the program has had on beneficiaries in her constituency. I'm pleased that here in Chongwe, I'm being informed by the minister that 444 vulnerable women will this year receive their productivity grant of 3,790 in two installments. These wonderful and hardworking women have so far managed to form 21 saving groups 
with some saving groups saving up to 14,000 kwacha. Meanwhile, beneficiaries of the program had this to say. Balm government wants, especially the jewel. Timi wanga ziko mopai chintu chamele mwachita. Chifukwa mno mchongwe tenzo vuti ikaisewa zimai. Apa manja tazwa ma business. Tenzo lat ma business tungono tungono. Manja mwatubu sting apa manje. Izi ndrama za mele mwatu pasa. Tufuna naifo mkatandizi reko na vena nguwa zaatu wali kusogolo. Mele wakali botenga kwe itandizo. Sheila Makosa reporting for Zanis in Chongwe district. A 33-year-old man of Kabwe is appealing for help to undergo an operation on his legs at Italian hospital. Benson Pensulo, who worked as a farm worker, says his desire is to regain the use of his legs in order to return to work and help take care of his family. Let's take a look. This is how Benson finds his way around the house to get what he needs if the friends are not around to either take him outside or to the bathroom. Benson, who lost his mother at the age of four and lives with his father, lost the use of his legs after a health complication. After got one week, so. Kunfamo no more problem, you go at a cane of Poko Barandati, Baraka Funia, Basangira Tamoti. The father says his son needs to undergo an operation at the Italian hospital. Bakwata, Camilla Quesu, Nimpia, she left for a coca with Italian hospital. And Kurekunda Quata Fe Kuya Undapua. Eh, you open up and done a pena. Why not today? Mostly, Benson relies on his friends to go about doing things, and they made this appeal on his behalf. Uh, Benson Mune Susana, we grew up together. He was a healthy person. All of a sudden, to achieve a certain condition, African, So, I'm facing a challenges in terms of mobility. He has to be doing He has to be pushed from and two places. And his life, because of the same condition, he could have done something better with his life. But we believe there's a chance that he's going to get back to his foot again. Because he Na papa tasa na ba president wandi muafu ni kumu nandi oyonga kukabia kwa kutunika kukabia kwa kubeba tini muafu ishinafu bila muatu afu la muamuafu ishinafu bila muatu afu muishira imone inangu Benson's operation was pegged at fifty five thousand in twenty twenty one. It is hoped that war wishers will come to his aid and help him regain the use of his legs. For Zanis in Kabwe, Central Province, I'm Kelvin Tembo. As we end Zanis news, we take a look at the stories that made headlines. President Hijilima in Mozambique for state visit. Government cracks a racket of traders overpricing millimil in Kabul. Commissioning of 51 million kwacha water regulation system in Muchinga province set. Plus delays to complete in Sumbu Mini Hospital, Wari Government. Thank you so much for staying with us. Remember, we are one Zambia, one nation. On behalf of the Interzenist Production team, my name is Juliet Intelisingh. Bye bye and God bless. <laughs>